Well, hello everyone and welcome to probably the first video of the new year and uh we're actually going to be doing our first console video uh and that's going to be messing around with one of these guys i'm sure you've all seen the gamestop xbox 360 videos but we're not actually going to be opening it up and ex exposing gamestop for uh doing the whole bolt mod thing on the heat sinks instead of using the uh, stock x clamps we're not going to be we're not going to be delving into that um basically um this 360 is red ringed and i'll get more into that in a little bit and we're going to basically try to fix it um there's no real way to fix a red ringed 360 it's more just temporarily making it work until eventually the motherboard uh, warps again and the chips desolder so now i was originally going to do a different video where i tried to set up a three and a half inch hard drive to work on a uh th my xbox 360e uh which is my main 360 because well that one uh does not red ring uh and uh, this one has so basically the story behind this is i wanted the hard drive from this um a friend had it uh, he had it, someone gave it to him, and then I basically asked, like, hey, I need the hard drive, my 360 doesn't have a hard drive, and I need it just temporarily, um, and he was like, okay, and he ended up just giving me the whole thing, so, uh, yeah, this was a pre-owned Xbox 360, oh yeah, it's not a refurbished, um, so there wouldn't be anything to expose them anyways, of. it's, it's the refurbed ones that are usually the problem, uh, is this accurate? Um, uh, well, uh, yeah. Well, I guess this list is accurate. Um, but I did not get a controller with it, so... That sucked. Uh, okay, let's take this down and put it... And get this stuff out. Sorry for the poorer lighting. Uh, I'm filming this uh, when it's darker, and I don't have the benefit of sunlight to help me. So I'm just using my, like, normal lights in my room, because I don't have any filming lights, which is something I need to get. So we got our massive log and power brick. And we dig deeper in. We have the shell of the hard drive. The hard drive is no longer in here, because uh, I took it out. And put it in my 360E. We got the console itself, uh, so... The USB port door is broken off. Um, and we've got a set of uh, component slash composite cables, the official Microsoft ones. So we have the digital AV out port as well. So that's all we got going on over there in terms of the box. So yeah, this is the typical original 360 it is a slightly later model it has hdmi but as far as i know it is not a xeon board uh so it was manufactured august 4th 2007 i believe xeon or no wait no xeons are the original model i meant jasper that's jasper is the good original 360 that usually doesn't red ring or at least not really as often <laughs> um yeah so this is if we do fix this uh it's probably gonna red ring again uh, unless i take good care of it uh so yeah um so i'm gonna go ahead and plug it in show you what's going on here which i mean you probably all know what a 360 red ring looks like it's a massive power plug i never understood why they made it so massive but the lights dimmed when I plugged it in. How many amps does this thing have on it? Oh my god, 16 and a half amps output from the 12 volt rail? Holy crap. How much power does this thing need? So, uh, turn it on here, let it go for a minute, and there you go. Typical three light red ring. Uh, the other thing about this is also the second most common failure, so it's it's got the double whammy of failures here that the that the disk drive uh, is kind of worn out. I think it's just the belt 
that's uh I think like the belt got is getting loose. I think that's what that means. So if I Yeah, you kind of <laughs> even then it's pretty temperamental. Well, now it like doesn't want to open at all. <laughs> Let's try turning it off. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, uh, how are we gonna fix this? Well, um, I don't have a heat gun to, uh, properly fix it. So, basically, uh, um, there's a couple other methods you can do. You can try baking it to reflow it. Uh, I don't have a dedicated oven for that because you really don't want to put, you really don't want to put, uh, motherboards and stuff in your, in your main oven. People tell you it's fine, but it, it's really not because, like, if a capacitor explodes or something, or even just the fumes of the solder can come off and that can, like, get baked into your oven. It means whenever you cook something in there, you're, <laughs> you're gonna be, uh, it's gonna be getting cooked into your food, potentially. Uh, potentially, I'm not saying it will, but I'm just, I don't want to take that risk. Plus, I don't want to have to deal with it if capacitor explodes or something. So, uh, basically, we're going to be trying uh, the jamming the fan method. Uh, I thought about doing the towel method, but the jamming the fan method seems to be slightly more reliable, if you can call it reliable. Uh, basically, what you got to do is you just jam the fans in the back with something. A lot of people say Q-tips or paper clips, so I'll find whatever's closest to me. And you just stick them in the back there. It doesn't let the fan spin. The chips heat up to a uh, ludicrous degree. And then uh, you wait until the uh, lights on the front go from three to two. Three lights to two, and I turned it on by accident. Um, and uh, it reflows it kind of uh, not guaranteed to work um, and I know it's really bad for the chips uh, to heat up that much but I mean it's broken anyways and it's probably going to break again I just kind of want to see if it, it'll work so uh, let's go get something to jam the fans with Okay, I've gone ahead and uh, use a flashlight here just to kind of seal better. I stuck this paper clip in between the two fans, so now when I turn it on, the fans will try to spin, but they can't. Which, uh, I know this isn't good for the fans either, but like I said, this thing's broken anyways. Like, what's it really going to hurt to try it just for a, just for a dumb YouTube video, you know? We're just, we're just messing around here. We're just having some fun. Fun New Year's video. Uh, this is being filmed on New Year's Day. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, I'm going to come back, see if this ever changes to two lights. Who knows? They say it takes like 10 to 15 minutes. And then you're supposed to let it cool down for a while. Um, so yeah, I'll come back if that ever happens. Here's a little bit of a side note. Um, I never knew that the... Original power supply had a fan in it. I was wondering, like, where's this noise? Where's this fan noise coming from? I was like, 360s, fans are jammed. I looked in there. But no, this power supply has a fan in it. I never knew that. Um, probably because I, I never used I never used this model. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it sucks air in from this side and blows it out the other side. So uh, it makes sense because it's creating... 16 and a half amps output on the 12 volt rail like what 203 watts 5 volts input or 5 amp input on 120 volts dang dude okay so I'm already back um what happened was I stuck this in uh and then I left for like a couple minutes to go get some water and I came back and this had pushed its way out. The fans had rattled it out from the uh, back. So the fan started spinning again. So I turned it off. Uh, 
uh, put paper clip back in, turned it back on, and I noticed that the lights didn't turn red. And apparently after only three minutes of having the fans jammed up, yeah, um, but the fans are getting really loud. Yeah, so I'm gonna turn that off. <laughs> Just like that is that is jet engine uh, territory. I thought the fat PS3 was loud, but uh, no, this is this is way louder. So, um, this brings me to phase two of my plan, which was I was gonna open it up, clean it out, put new thermal paste on it, put it all back together. And then you try and use it for a while to see if it ends up uh, having any issues. I mean, eventually it will again, but just to see how long I can go. So, uh, basically, uh, I'm not going to really film taking it apart or cleaning it or anything. You don't really need to see that. Because uh, I think you all know how to... You can look up how to replace uh, Xbox 360 thermal paste. I just kind of wanted to do this just for fun to see uh, to see how long I can get it to last. So uh, I'll be back once I uh, clean it up, replace some paste, and probably put it back together. Unless I find anything interesting inside. Okay, so coupled with the uh, 360's motherboard not being particularly well designed, known for warping, this could have been also why this uh, 360 was red ringing. Eey, look at all that dust. Probably hardly any airflow getting through that heat sink. Also, this does appear to be the better uh, GPU heat sink with the little, uh, the little uh, part with the heat pipe that comes out in front of here. So it is a slightly better heat sink. So maybe this 360 has potential to be saved uh, for at least a good amount of time. So uh, I'm going to continue with the cleaning and the thermal paste reapplication. All right, so it's the next day now. I've uh, cleaned it out, replaced the thermal paste, uh, put it all back together, and I've been using it off and on. Um, uh, I haven't been doing like extensive playtime on it, but uh, I did play like the, Fori the Horizon, Forza Horizon 2 demo for about an hour, and uh, it works fine. See over there? starts up fine and everything so uh i guess i'm gonna call this a success um i'll probably make like an update video uh sometime in the future about um like about uh how it's doing see if it red brings ever again which it probably will um so i'm actually considering this becoming my main 360 at least just for a while to see how long it'll last. Um, just the one problem with that is it doesn't have Wi-Fi, um, which isn't that big of a deal. I don't have Xbox Live Gold or anything, and I don't use the online that much, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. Um, I also did f fix the disc tray, so it's a little bit more reliable in terms of opening. Kind of what I did is I just kind of cleaned all the gears and the, the belt and stuff in there, and it's a little bit more reliable. Um, you can see when I open it, it kind of hesitates once it gets to a certain point, which I don't know if that's part of the design or not. Um, I never owned a one of these when it was new. I never owned a 360 when it was new. <laughs> I'm pretty new to 360s actually. I've only had one for about a year, so. But uh, yeah, it works. It's there. So uh, I'm not gonna show any games on it. Uh, I don't think you need to see that. I mean, it works like a normal 360. It was just more for, like, reliability testing that I wanted to see. So, uh, yeah. So I'm going to use this for a while. I'll probably make an update video maybe in a year if it doesn't break sooner. Just to kind of be like, hey, it still works. So, uh, I guess see you next year. Uh, well, the, the, they'll be, they'll, trust me, there'll be videos in between now and a year from now, so, uh, well, yeah, that's the, 
Red Ring 360 fix video. Even though I didn't really fix it, I just kind of put a band-aid on it. <laughs> Bye.